Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. Uh, we are in the Wednesday of the fourth week of Lent. Um, I'm back from Goa. As some of you know, I was there to celebrate my mother's birthday, also to spend some time uh, in Goa. It's always a place where I find uh, a lot of uh, peace and quiet. And uh, it was a beautiful trip, I must tell you. It was a very, very beautiful trip. But I'm back in the parish and uh, our text today that we are reflecting on is taken from Isaiah chapter 49 verses 8 to 15. Also for your benefit if you'd like, I also have a previous teaching on the Gospel of John chapter 5 verse 17 to 30. If you go to the description box of this YouTube video, you'll find uh, the links uh, to the Gospel reflections. But I've entitled today's teaching, Better Times Follow Bitter Days. Now, to be exiled is simply to be kicked out. That's reality 101 for you. There are several sugar-coated ways of saying the same thing, but when played out, it means you are unwanted for whatever the socio-political reason may be. There are those that go into exile either to make a point as a voice of conscience or because one's life is threatened. So either you are sent into exile or some people choose exile for themselves. Now God sent his people, his covenant people into exile. He had promised a relationship that would last forever but while ratifying this covenant he clearly made his demands in return for his love for his protection. They were to be his people who kept his laws diligently and he would be their God. This is something that we have seen and reflected upon last week in the texts that were taken from Deuteronomy, Hosea, Isaiah. Now we tend to take those we love for granted. We most certainly take God for granted clinging on to the fantasy that God's anger will never kick in. Uh, you will see the same text, a similar thought happening in tomorrow's first reading taken from uh, Exodus chapter 34. We tend to think that God's anger will never kick in. When it did, God sent his people into exile for 70 years. So lost were they in their self-pity that even in exile, they could not take responsibility for their sinful ways. And if you see the text of today, they blamed God for the situation that they found themselves in. The text of today, which is in poetic form, uh, remember it's from uh, the prophet, and the prophet is writing in poetic form. It is part of 26 verses uh, that form, forms this entire chapter. It was almost certainly composed during what came to be known as the period of the Babylonian exile between the years 586 and 539 BC. Now this explains in that sense the words of the text of today when the people of Israel are described as desolate heritages, as people in prison or living in darkness because God sent them into exile. Now, living in Babylon, the people were surrounded by the symbols of their captors' might. They are presented to us in the text of chapter 49 verse 21. They are presented to us as a barren people. That is to say they were unable to bring about their own future. Their lives are, le are, are lived and led in hardship and bitterness leaving these people extremely dispirited as they had to live in a land surrounded by signs of their own defeat and helplessness. You know, while we know that Israel never really had a change of heart, God on the other hand was nothing short of a bleeding heart. So in response to the alienation and the vulnerability of exile, the prophet on behalf of God offers the poem of Isaiah 49 in which um, distance that is created by this rift between God and man is overcome by intimacy. 
and helplessness of the people is met by the comforting presence of God. The people have suffered, as we know, a lengthy exile in Babylon for 70 years. And now Yahweh, as I said, God who has this bleeding heart for his people, begins to prepare for them a way back to their homeland, back to Jerusalem. In the text of today, Yahweh draws upon the image of a mother's love to reassure Zion of the constancy of his love. It has seemed otherwise to the exiles, strange, but it seems otherwise to them because the period of their disciplining has been so lengthy and so they seem to complain against God. But Yahweh has not forgotten his people. He has not abandoned them and will not refuse to act out of great compassion for them even though they did not deserve it. You know, Yahweh today is described, or Yahweh says, though a mother may forget her children, I will not forget you. It is impossible for me to stop loving you. You know, though sometimes bizarre accounts of unspeakable cruelty surface from time to time, everyone knows that a woman, a mother, will never forget her nursing child. There are stray and bizarre incidences. Today the Lord says, surely, even if such a thing happens, they may forget. I will not forget you. And that's what he's telling his people Israel, he's telling us. You know, Yahweh's affection for his people is greater than the devotion a woman has for a nursing child. That's how much God loves us. In our darkest moments, let us not forget the unchanging intensity of God's love for us. I pray for you, my dear friends. May God bless you, even though you are walking sometimes through a difficult time, know that God loves you and God is with you. Uh, of late, uh, several of you have been writing to me, telling me of difficult circumstances that you are facing. Uh, children who are sick in hospital, seriously ill, financial struggles that you have been going through, issues of relationships. But what I find very heartening with many of our listeners is their fidelity to God and trust in Him. I can tell you this from my own experience that trusting in Him, He literally guides you. I must tell you, um, I'm going through a bit of a, a struggle in my own life and quite recently in Goa I said to the Lord, I am a wicked generation but please give me a sign. In the same day He gave me not one but two, God confirms us very often in our own weakness, in our own struggle, in our own pain. He shows us to those of us who are close to him and even those who are not close to him. When they cry out to God, God reaches out. Can a mother forget her baby or a woman, the child within a womb? And even if that should happen, says God, I will not forget you. Today I want to wish uh, two very special people who I've known, interacted over the years in my life, uh, to Clint, uh, who was uh, who was in my former parish, who is in my former parish of St. Jude. I want to wish him a very happy birthday. Um, Clint was a, is a very special person, uh, going through his own struggles in life. Uh, he has come through greater and bolder, serving the church as an animator, as uh, the SCC coordinator for the parish, uh, as a parish councillor, even from uh, his youth. So God bless you, Clint. And also to my dear friend um, Dawn, uh, the daughter of Joe and Celeste Cordo. Many of you may know her. She's a great musician. Uh, many years ago, I would be at Joe and, uh, and Celeste's home every Tuesday. It was my off day and I would go and spend some time with them. And I would always tell Dawn, that's my time to come and trouble you. And she would take uh, all the, the, uh, the, the, the fun and the jokes in good spirit. So happy birthday, Clint, and happy birthday, Dawn. And to all of you who are watching, may the Lord bless you, keep you, preserve you from every danger and harm. Um, 
I'll see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We're going to reflect on a text from Exodus, which is really a follow-up of what we have been reading uh, from the first reading all these days. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to like this video, leave your comments, and um, share this video with your friends. Bye for now.